his second video on his new channel is titled Apostate Prophet Demolished. Oh, but you're obsessed with him, by the yeah, way, just in yeah. case you forgot. Number one, are you allowed to disagree with anything that the Quran and Muhammad say? No, nope. Ibn Taymiyyah said whatever the Prophet, peace be upon him, learns from the Lord is obligatory for the Muslims to believe, even if they don't understand it. Okay, I, I didn't really uh, expect a response to that question, so it's very weird that he would actually cite Ibn Taymiyyah out of <laughs> all, all in response to that question, just say no. Do you believe an Islamic state should be eventually established, or do you prefer secularism? 100% an Islamic state should be established. Look at what happens when secularism runs wild in the United States. You have quote unquote, go move to one. You're pregnant and have periods, and you have people believing there's infinite genders. Get it out of here, it's garbage. You can go move to one if that's truly what you believe in. It, it's a bit odd that you would continue to choose to live in a secular Western democracy when you have the option to move to many different Muslim countries out there. And uh, this is a very common way of thinking found by found um, uh, in the in the online Muslim apologist communities, where they try to present this false dichotomy of like either you have Islam, an Islamic state with Islamic rules, or you have a terrible liberal Western nation where people are making all kinds of weird claims and going through all kinds of weird things. Even if you disagree with this part, the alternative is not only Islam. That's a false dichotomy. You have to, There is a wide range of ways of viewing the world and living the world and organizing society. It's not either Islam or whatever you dislike about the West. It's a fallacy. Do you believe that homosexuality should be banned and punishable by death? Abu Dawood, volume 6, page 510, hadith number 4462. Here's the thing, if we're under an Islamic state, should these things be banned? Yes. If you're a disgusting human being who goes out in public and does indecent sexual acts and gets caught, yes, the court should oh give you the God. punishment that you deserve. Four witnesses see and then report it to the courts, yes, you should get the punishment. Now, if you do these acts in your own privacy, then it's between you and Allah. <laughs> And it's as simple as no. that. The courts handle the punishment. The people do not. Nobody asked about the people. No one asked that. No one asked that. I would like you to go up to any well-known Muslim apologist out there and say, is it okay if gay people commit homosexual acts in private? Uh, because I don't think they're going to agree with you on that stance, Paul. Yeah, Paul, go to, um, I don't know. Muhammad Hijab? Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, to mention the uh, lower ones. Go to Farid, go to Daniel Kikichu, go to all these people. Or go to Sheikh Uthman and say, hey guys, uh, I'm right, right? Uh, that uh, <laughs> if homosexual people only practice it in their home, then it doesn't, you know, it, it, it's, it's, not, it's none of our, our business. It's only punished with death if you do it outside in public. Right? Right, guys? Right, Achi? Uh, <laughs> they will all tell you that that is nonsense. And they will ask you, where the hell did you get that from? The ruling is that if it is discovered that you engaged in homosexual activities, then you deserve the death penalty. If it is proven, if there are four people, or if, it is, uh, if there is enough convincing evidence, or if the individuals come out and say, yes, we did this, then that is punishable. The idea that when you do it at home, in your home, that it's all between you and Allah, such a thing doesn't exist. Otherwise, it would be okay for gay people to live together, which does not happen in Islamic societies. Just learn the first most basic things about these problems. Or do you believe that the Jews and Christians and the non-believers are the worst of creatures? Let's just not listen to you and look into the tafsir. It is they who are the worst of people because they learned about the truth, but they ignored it. So they became losers in this world and the hereafter. Those who opposed the truth from Allah really don't care if this hurts your feelings, a puss. So what this actually means is uh, that those who reject Islam, that is what is being meant here. Those who hear about Islam and then reject Islam are disbelievers, kafirs, and they are, according to the Quran, the worst of creatures. Excuse me, what exactly about this was now a refutation? I was just thinking the same thing. So you were putting forward these very basic questions that 
clearly, if you are answering yes to prove the barbarity of Islam, and he's going through all of them and going, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and somehow he's debunked you. I'm a little bit confused here. De so, no, demolished. You have to say oh, it demolished. Wrong. Demolished. Loudly. Demolished. <laughs> the Quran says that those who don't believe in Islam, who reject Islam, are the worst of creatures. That's what it says, Paul. Just say yes, Paul. Do you agree that a 50-year-old man can marry a nine-year-old girl? Interesting how the same people that complain about this are the same people that want to force little kids to talk about sexuality in school. Really? Are they? I've never heard Ridvan talk about wanting to force kids to discuss yeah. sexuality in school. I've never heard him say that. I don't know. Maybe he found evidence for that somewhere that I actually for that I actually am in favor of forcing people to discuss such things in school. I don't know. Maybe a <laughs> voice came to him in the early hours of the morning and told him that you believe that. <laughs> This is a very basic fallacy together with a lie where you distract from the point by bringing up something that your opponent said, which has nothing to do with the point at all. Just respond to the point. Just get to the point. Just respond to the point. The term maturity then versus maturity now is completely different, and you should know this. Uh-huh. And is that what I asked? It's a is yes that or no I question. Here's my question once more. Do you agree that a 50-year-old man can marry a nine-year-old girl? The term maturity then versus maturity now is completely different, and you should know this. Did I talk about then and now? No, I ask a very simple question. Do you think it's okay that uh, a 50-year-old man can marry a nine-year-old girl or a six-year-old girl? Paul, the Muslim apologists that you interact with will not accept your explanation that this is just about Muhammad's own time. Many of your fellow Muslim apologists will tell you that marrying a nine-year-old or six-year-old girl in our time is still completely okay because there is a moral example set here. Please find me a source in which your respected Muslim apologists and scholars say this was only in that time based on this specific hadith and ruling and so on. I mean, he did say on his website that if a person has reached the age of puberty, they are mature. And to me, that, that is implying that if a girl has reached puberty at nine years old, then yes, she can marry a 50-year-old man, according to Paul's very clear website. And his uh, piece of evidence was that a scholar said that if a child has a wet dream, then it's considered puberty, and then the child is ready. <sighs> He's trying to get yes or no responses out of questions that require in-depth answers. No, it doesn't. Uh, no, just answer the question, man. <laughs> you didn't even answer the question. <laughs> yeah, you didn't answer. That's very funny. Do you believe that the Muslims will fight and kill the Jews, and even rocks and trees will give the Jews away? The answer should be very simple here. Yes, because that's what the Hadith say. If you simply search up the Hadith he mentions and then go back one, it explains exactly what this Hadith is about. The Jews will fight against you, and you will gain victory. You... Oh, great. And what? now... So the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, uh, what you're doing here by looking at, at the other report is you're finding one version in which it says the Jews will fight you, as opposed to the other versions which, which say you will fight the Jews. And debunk. okay, why exactly? <laughs> how exactly does this now debunk me or is a response to my question? Just answer the question Do you believe that in the future the Muslims will fight the Jews and kill them, and all and even the trees and rocks will say there is a Jew behind me, come and kill? him but only one tree will not betray them because that tree is the tree of the Jews that's what your hadiths say just say yes I agree that those who leave Islam should be put to death if under an Islamic state you leave the fold of Islam and then you cause mischief in the land and you don't repent for it you get whatever the punishment is that you deserve which is the death penalty according so you do to Islam. So yeah you so he does yes. he doesn't even have to include the part of uh, causing mischief in the land by islamic laws if you leave islam then you will be put to death that is the islamic law agreed upon by the islamic scholars and you don't repent for it you get whatever the punishment is that you deserve false if you leave islam and you cause mischief by talking about it and spreading your disbelief and criticizing Islam. It doesn't matter if you repent or not, you will still be put to death, even if you repent. Whereas if you leave Islam, you can be given the option to repent, by which you can evade the death penalty. But even there, there is a difference among scholars, whether this option should be given, whether you should be given a little bit of time to repent, or whether you should just be killed.
this is misinformation plus he uh, just avoids a simple yes or no i just think it's so funny that he has such a limited and narrow understanding of basic islamic jurisprudence that any any muslim out there is probably well aware of but he is so convinced beyond a doubt that he has to be right and that he is teaching people the right way and the right interpretation and demolishing you of course <laughs> that women are deficient in intelligence. So this is the hadith you mentioned, and this is the explanation. This is the one that goes more in depth. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? This is her deficiency in her religion. Deficiency in intelligence has to do with transaction and law-related things, since women weren't really involved with those things back then. What is he talking about? But here, you can read these. Okay, so my question is, do you believe that women are deficient in intelligence? And his response is, the reports say that women are deficient in intelligence because they can't engage in the financial jurisprudential things as mentioned in the Quran. Okay. Oh. So do you believe women are deficient in intelligence? <laughs> <laughs> And then he skipped my last two questions, I think, and just made some little weird comments. Wait a minute. Sunset to murky water. <laughs> Saw the sun with his own eyes as if it was setting in a dark black sea. In my original video, I didn't even mention the sun setting in a murky water. My question to Ninja Mami, which is the uh, the topic of the video that he's responding to, was, do you believe that the sun goes somewhere at night? And I was quoting Muhammad, who said that the sun goes to a resting place and prostrates under the throne to, of Allah and so on. He's responding to something completely uh, irrelevant to the sun setting a dark mud in the Quran. Wife beating. Shut up and go on my website if you want the answer for this. That's it. Oh my god. That's it? That's, That's it. the That's... demolishment? He has now demolished you? Is that what yeah. we're saying? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just don't know what else there is to say about this guy. I mean, he's presented with a series of simple yes or no questions and then he demolishes you by proving your point and taking his sweet time to essentially just say yes i don't how did he watch that and think like this is good like i've got him now this is great i don't i even saw a um a tweet from him earlier in which he said i already debunked him completely he won't be able to return from that <laughs> what? no he, he said this i'm serious that's what he actually thinks <laughs> Paul, if you are so convinced of your Islamic knowledge, genuinely convinced of your Islamic knowledge, no Mufti Google coming into play here. Have a discussion live, one-on-one, -on -one, moderated. It doesn't have to be um, on your channel, Apostate Prophet's channel. Let it be on a third-party, unbiased platform and just show us your confidence in your own knowledge. If you are genuinely that confident, I don't see why this would be an issue for you. Like you said, you clearly have the time to spend on these activities. So show us, just show us that you can demolish apostate profit. Stay away from Islam.